Hi, so in this video I'm going to show you how to flash Android KitKat with Lollipop and uh, I'm going to do it with the Nexus 7 2012 and I'm going to try to fast forward through the um, installation of the software but I'm going to do it all step by step. So um, the first steps, the software you need is 7-zip and I'll have this all in the uh, description section of this video. The Java SDK, the Android SDK and the USB drivers for your specific device and the um, OS image that you want to flash. In my case, I'm downloading Lollipop. So here's all the links. The first one is the Java download and you want to download the latest JDK. So make sure you download the latest JDK. So the second link is the um, Android SDK, which comes with the GUI. I'm just going to download the entire studio which includes the SDK in addition to the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. Um, the next step is actually the USB drivers. So this is very important. It's, it's not simply the USB drivers, but it's the USB drivers for actually the SDK connecting to your device and actually being able to flash the RAM, I mean the ROM and the uh, NAND. So. Um, in my case it was ASUS, so download your particular version. This step, uh, don't just think of it as just any uh, generic USB device that uh, shows up as a, uh, as a drive letter. It is not. It is uh, something more than that. It's actually device drivers. Um, and then the next thing is image that you want to flash. So for me, if I scroll down um, Nisaki, Nakazi, I mean, um, and it was this 5.0.2 so I downloaded this particular version factory image um, but you'll see there's other devices like Nexus 4, Nexus 10 um, for example um, so just make sure you got all of that so um, I've, I've downloaded all of these and I'm gonna install Java right now and there's a little bit more to just installing it so I'm, I'm gonna assume you know how to do the next 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 and I'm gonna fast forward those aspects of it uh, but but parts that I'm assuming that uh, is a little bit different I will actually be um, showing you how to do it so okay so Java is finished installing and I'm gonna set up the Java home environmental variable so I'm gonna to go to my computer here on my desktop and go to properties and I'm gonna to go to advanced settings go to environmental variables and I happen to already have added it um, but the variable you have to add is the JDK so if I bring up the directory where it was installed so it's under program files and make sure you have the JDK, not the JRE. So this is the variable I put in here. And I'm going to click OK and OK. And so then I have my uh, Java environmental variable set. And I'm going to install Android SDK now, or the Android IDE. So I downloaded it here. And I am going to start it, start the installation process. And once again, I'm going to fast forward through the installation because I'm assuming you know how to click next, next, next. I, I am going to make some comments about where you install the SDK because I'm, I'm going to install it under program files. And that's going to have a, a slight permission problem. So I'm going to have to set some permissions uh, for that directory. I don't actually like where they put the default, which is under application data local. Uh, so and um, that is like more of a temporary location. Uh, uh, where, where, so I'm gonna click next here select everything and here's where they recommend the SDK be installed I'm gonna change it to I, I don't like it in app data because lots of times that's usually where temporary data is installed versus more permanent data so I am gonna put it under SDK and it's gonna give me a warning uh, SDK I say no I actually do want to install it there notice it gave me the warning about read writes I'm gonna just click install now and I'm gonna fast forward this through this whole thing 
So it looks like the installation is done. I'm going to click next here. And before I start the studio, I'm going to set the permissions on my SDK folder because I didn't install it in the place they recommended it. So I'm going to go under program files, Android, right click on SDK, click properties, security, and I'm going to actually edit and add everyone because they're they have a automatic process that actually updates the SDK and now it's traversing the directory and setting up all the child objects to be under that to be under uh, to have permissions to actually be written and read Okay, so that's all set. I'm going to click OK. And I'm actually going to have to put this... So I'm in, I'm in the SDK folder here where I, where I installed it. You might have installed it in a different place, but uh, go to Platform Tools. And I'm going to go back to my computer here, click Properties, and I'm going to set up the path variable. So once again, I'm going to click on Advanced Settings, Environmental Variables, scroll down to where my path is path here and you'll notice I already added this but you want to add it to the end so what you want to do is you want to go to the end and put a semicolon where it is paste your directory there and then put another semicolon and click OK 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 and at this point um, you might want to reboot uh, because the environmental variables might not be set when you bring up a command prompt. So just reboot just in case. Uh, in, in my case, because I already set these environmental variables ahead of time, I don't have to reboot. Uh, so um, in order to verify that, I'm going to bring up one of my command prompts. So when I bring up my command prompt here, I'm going to click echo path and I could see in my last directory here I have the SDK platform tools in my path so it will find some of the programs that I need when I run the flashing so this is a very important step uh, don't skip this step and also if I do if I just type set I just want to make sure my Java home is set which it is it's right here Java home so I'm all set with the environment variables and uh, I'm gonna leave that command prompt up. Now when, it, when I start the studio, I don't really have to start the studio but just to show you that it actually installed fine. So it's gonna update the SDK tool so maybe it was a good idea to start it. Now if I didn't set the permissions in that SDK folder this would have failed. So it does have an auto update process here. Okay, it's finished and it says everything was successful. I'm going to click finish here. And now every everything is installed as far as the software except for the device drivers. So I downloaded the device drivers as I mentioned on this site here. And I'm going to have all the links in the description section. So um, the device drivers I'm going to expand. So this is where 7-zip comes in and also additionally uh, I'm going to be using this later on to uh, untar the files, the image files also. So I'm going to unzip it here. So this is where the device drivers are. Now if I go to my computer again and I do manage, at this point you want to plug in your device. So let me show you the device here. So I have my device plugged in and I'm going to go into settings and you want to scroll all the way to the settings of the Nexus and go to about tablet scroll all the way down and what you're going to do here is activate developer options so tap this seven times and that will activate developer options so notice now it says you are a developer and what that does is if you go back 
you see now above about tablet there is developer options and what you want to do here is enable debug mode so if I've already done that with this checkbox you can see that checkbox is there I'm going to tap it in and uh, notice what it says here and I'm going to say OK now debug is activated but I still have to install the device drivers. So here, uh, with the Android plugged in and the developer options activated and the USB debugging activated, what I'm going to do is go under Device Manager. And you'll see here I have the Nexus 7. And I'm going to navigate to this directory where I downloaded the device drivers. And I'm going to be doing this manually. So update device software, browse and I am going to paste this directory here in here I'm going to click next and it's going to say install the Google Android phone it mines isn't a phone in particular it's just the Nexus 7 tablet but um, that was what was in the description okay so that took a good uh, 45 seconds uh, surprisingly so I'm gonna click OK close here and you'll see now there's this Android phone my Nexus 7 disappeared here and this is it the Android composite Android debugging bridge interface the ADB, uh, ADB interface so um, I'm actually ready to flash now so you'll see here we're done with installing all the software I've downloaded the image so let me unzip that right now so the image that I downloaded was um, actually this one it's the LRX this is Nakazi uh, which is the uh, Android Lollipop 5.0 and I'm gonna unzip this again I'm using 7-zip here and when I go into the directory here I want to unzip, untar this also which I could do using 7-zip again and if I go into this directory and into this one you'll notice this is the magic that happens here flash all so I want to go into this directory and I'm jumping around a little bit here but for the most part it's uh, I followed everything sequentially I plugged in the device, I've unlocked it with the developer tools and I showed you that and I'm, I installed the device drivers which is what I did here and I'm gonna unzip, I unzip the tar the tarball and I am gonna go to that directory so I bring up my command prompt and I'm gonna change directory to where I have so if you notice this is that's my SDK directory actually this is my directory this is my SDK directory but you'll notice I, I could run these commands now from here because I put it in my path so I just have to run three commands the first command I'm gonna run is ADB reboot bootloader which sets my Android device into a certain state so let me show you that into the bootloader state then I'm gonna unlock the bootloader to so I could flash it when it's locked you, you can't actually flash it so just make sure it's unlocked it'll just error out if you actually already have it unlocked and then I'm gonna flash it with uh, flash all so I'm gonna do that now ADB re boot bootloader and you see when I execute this command my Android gives me a prompt and it says do you accept do you allow connection to this computer I'll say yes and I'll click OK and you'll notice it, it actually failed uh, so I have to execute it again because I didn't allow it says here device unauthorized so I am gonna uh, run the command again 
and you'll see when I run the command this is the state it goes in and that's what this particular command actually does. Now I'm going to actually run fastboot and this will fail because I have it unlocked already and it says, you see it says it's already unlocked but in any case if, you, if it's not unlocked it'll just quickly have a small little message here that says it's unlocked. So the next thing is just to flash it and I will be typing in flash all and keep in mind that I, I am in this directory where this command is which is where I'm running flash all so make sure this is this is where you actually unzipped everything so I'm gonna run flash all here and this is going to take about five to eight minutes, usually eight minutes, to flash everything. So this is running. Okay, so it's finished now and it'll boot up to this screen. And you'll see it's it's actually an unlock symbol here and this is the part that's going to take a good seven to eight minutes so don't be alarmed don't think that the flashing somehow failed and it's just stuck in a weird state. And Okay, so finally the OS has booted up and that completes the installation of Lollipop 5.0 and, uh, you know, hope this helps you and thank you for watching.